Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're 3D scanning using the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro. If you see my channel, then you know I love technology. So when Creality offered to send me the CR Scan Ferret Pro to try, I wasn't going to say no. Full disclosure though, I'm not being paid for this review, but I do get to keep the scanner and I have been provided with affiliate links. I hope you still find this to be an honest and fair review. And in any case, you'll be able to see the results on the screen so you can make up your own mind. Having said that, I do genuinely like Creality products. I use their Ender 3S1 for my FDM prints and it's a fantastic 3D printer. But I've never used a 3D scanner before and I wanted to know what it was capable of and if it was a bit of kit that could be useful for railway modelers. Could I scan something accurately enough so that I could shrink it down and 3D print it for the railway? The thing that really got me excited was the thought of doing full body scans of people and 3D printing them. Loads of modelers have mini versions of themselves on layouts. Here's Richard Watson from New Junction just hanging out on John JMC's Byway MPD. Could I use this to create a mini Rob for Little Wicket? Fortunately, when you install the Creality Scan software, one of the first things that Creality recommends scanning is a human, and they've even got face and body preset scan modes. So rather begrudgingly, my wife, who I think it's fair to say, isn't as enthusiastic about technology as I am, agreed to scan me. Here we've connected the scanner directly to a computer using the long USB cable provided. The scanner does have a wireless option that makes use of a handheld device, which would be ideal for this because you could move around the subject without the wire. But my crappy Samsung S20, which desperately needs replacing, didn't have enough storage space for a large scan. Going directly to the computer for the full body scan was faster, allowed us to make bigger scan files and process them quicker. The way it works is that the scanner is moved over the subject, collecting data points and recording their position in a 3D space. The points build up on the screen and you move around the subject to build up a 3D picture. The software provides a few different views and it guides you on how close the scanner should be to the surface being scanned. And the scanner itself has built-in anti-shake tracking to keep everything nice and smooth. At this point, I think it's important to highlight that it takes practice to get reasonable results from this scanner. Neither myself or my wife had any experience with 3D scanners before this. And as with any new technology, there's a learning curve. If you expect to get perfect scans the first time you use this, then you'll probably be disappointed. But if you invest the time to learn about it and practice, then you'll start to see some results relatively quickly. For example, you can see here that the scanner gets confused about which leg it's looking at and gives me an extra leg to the left. We spotted this and were able to get the scanner back on track. And you'll see later that I can just select the erroneous points and delete them from the point cloud before meshing the model together. We only had a limited time with the scanner before we had to make this video and it took my wife about 10 attempts at scanning to get these results, which I think is actually pretty impressive. I've had to do a little bit of tidying up in the software by cutting out the floor, for example, but the software makes it really easy to delete points from the points cloud before they all get meshed into a single model. To do the full body scan took us less than 10 minutes, but Creality suggests someone with experience can do a full body scan in around three minutes. For the duration of the scan, the subject has to keep completely still, else you effectively end up with a blurred model. Scanning someone with their hands in their pockets is therefore easier than scanning someone holding their arms out to the side or in midair. Most of the failed scans were because I wasn't able to hold my hand steady, resulting in hands with a few too many fingers and a very angry wife. Turns out it's far easier to stand perfectly still when threatened with divorce or being beaten to death with the scanner which would actually be a real challenge because the whole unit weighs just over 100 grams. Something that I really wasn't expecting was the scans to be in full color. The scanner has a built-in two megapixel high resolution camera that captures 24-bit full color models, and this really brings them to life. And the software also includes a face mapping algorithm that restores detailed features on the face to get a more vivid model. This is obviously really useful if you're scanning things to create 3D assets for computer games, for example, or we're not too far off full color 3D printing, so it would be useful for that when the technology arrives. Exporting the files for 3D printing is really easy, and whilst they were printing, I had a bit of fun importing myself into Mixamo, which makes it really easy to rig a 3D model and make them do silly things. 
Anyway, this is how the prints turned out. These were all done on the FDM printer and their G scale, so about eight centimeters tall. They're based on a couple of different scans and I was able to put myself in different poses by rigging myself in Mixamo. You can clearly tell it's me from the facial features and I'm satisfied with the level of detail that's come out. Later on, I'll show you how these turned out when printed in double O scale on the resin printer. So that's full body and face scanning, which I think has huge potential for railway modelers. Next, I set out to scan a few other things that I might want on my layout and put some of the other features to the test. The scanner does have some limitations though, and it's important to understand these to know what will and won't scan well. You've already seen that objects need to stay in the exact same position to be scanned, and you might have noticed that it didn't scan hair very well. So this isn't really suitable for scanning animals, for example. Size is also important. Creality suggests scanning objects bigger than 15 centimeters cubed and smaller than 200 centimeters cubed. It can't scan transparent objects, highly reflective surfaces, or featureless objects. However, there are things you can do to overcome these obstacles, either by spraying the transparent and shiny surfaces, or by adding tracking dots to the featureless flat objects. The unit comes with these sticky tracking dots, and I added them to the turntable I plan to use for future projects to help the scanner keep position. I'd heard that 3D scanners could struggle with black surfaces, but it didn't have any issues scanning this seat, which actually turned out to be one of the fastest and best scans I've done. I'd also heard that 3D scanners might not work well outdoors. So during a brief pause in the rain, I headed outside to scan a traffic cone. Here I'm using the handheld scanner with my bashed up Samsung S20. Creality recommend using slightly more modern phones, but it still worked with my older device. I opted to use the USB-C wired connection, but I could have used the wireless bridge, which uses the most advanced Wi-Fi 6 high-speed technology, and that's required for high-precision scanning. The high-speed Wi-Fi improves the transmission efficiency, resulting in smoother data collection. I'm using the fast scan mode here, which uses the 3D image specific ASICS chip, and it effectively reduces the performance requirements of the phone and brings higher scanning efficiency for medium sized and large objects. This large capture range meant that although the cone had quite a large featureless orange area, I was able to keep the base in frame and not lose tracking. Satisfied with my 3D cone, I tried to ignore the looks I was getting from my neighbors and moved on to scanning this wheel. The handle powers the scanner and can do up to two hours of continuous scanning before needing to be recharged. And the app allows you to process the whole model from initial scanner through to finished model. If you want to send the model from the app to a computer, then it's as easy as being on the same Wi-Fi network and scanning a QR code. I thought the scanner might struggle with the complexity of the wheel, but after a bit of editing, I think it's turned out quite well. And I've opted to fill the inside of the wheel, which will make it easier for 3D printing. These were both really quick scans and it only took a couple of minutes for each. Feeling marginally more confident in my amateur scanning abilities, I headed down to Great Malvern Station, which has some pretty impressive architecture and captured this decoration that surrounds one of the canopy pillars. Each pillar has a unique design and they've just been restored. And it would be a really nice little project to properly scan each of them whilst they're still looking this incredible. But I was running out of time and the light was fading. So I went on the hunt for other things to scan. On the hunt for things to scan. And I just about had time to scan the front of this post box. The front scanned really well and looks great in colour, but the back didn't come out because it's a large flat surface. I'd need to add tracking dots to it for the scanner to be able to track it properly. So there we go, the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro in action, and here are my 3D prints from the scans. Given the amount of practice we had with the scanner, I'm really impressed with how these have turned out, and I think more practice really is the key to getting better results. Knowing how the system works and the best way to use it is essential. You also need to understand the limitations of the technology and the methods to overcome them, such as spraying transparent surfaces or using the tracking markers on large flat surfaces. And it's important to remember Creality market these as consumer grade units. They're for personal use for hobbies rather than being a business tool. Although there's nothing to stop you creating something worth selling, be that a digital asset or a 3D print. At the time of filming, these retail for around £400, so they might not be something that every railway modeler has in their toolbox. But if you do a lot of 3D printing, then this might be something that you want to look into to go alongside your printer. For figures, I think this could be especially useful and potentially economical. To put things into perspective, Model U charges around £50 to scan a person and print two 00 scale models. Now, admittedly, that scan is gonna be far higher quality 
and take far less time. But for the cost of eight scans, you could have a CR Scan Ferret Pro and scan as much as you want in your own home, albeit at lower resolution and with a bit more effort. Maybe it's the type of thing that a model railway club would want to invest in to scan its members and other unique objects that they might want for a particular layout. If you've got any ideas for things that I could scan, then please let me know in the comments. And if you want to know more about the CR Scan Ferret Pro or purchase one, then there's an affiliate link in the description. Special thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support. If you found this video useful, then please press the like button and subscribe to the channel. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.